I'm Mark's friend Brian Sussman, host of the morning show on the great KSFO in San Francisco. Former U.S. Senator and New Jersey Governor John Corzine. That's right, former U.S. Senator, former Governor of New Jersey before Chris Christie came along. That John Corzine. You know, the John Corzine that was CEO of Goldman Sachs, that John Corzine. You know, the John Corzine who's best buds with Obama and Biden. Now, on my morning program on KSFO in San Francisco, uh, you know, Mark has all of his names for the various politicians. For example, he calls <laughs> he calls my representative, Nancy Pelosi, he refers to her as Stretch. Stretch. Uh, but we also have names for... Um, the president and the vice president. And again, we're just, it's a morning radio show. We have to lighten the load. We have to laugh a little bit. So I refer to the president as Beavis Obama and the vice president as Joe Butthead. Is there anything wrong with that? I ask you the question. So John Corzine is best friends with Beavis and Butthead. Oh, in fact, when they first took office, yes, during the transition, who was the one guy they called right off the bat to get advice to get advice about the economy, how to save and create jobs. In fact, it may some people are actually saying the guy who came up with the phrase save and create jobs or save or create jobs, whatever the heck, drives me crazy. They say that may have been John Corzine. So, again, when they're in transition into the White House, who was the first person they called? John Corzine. You know, they may like John Corzine, but there are thousands of people right now who are very ticked off with Mr. Corzine, because John Corzine is responsible for $1.2 billion of client money that is missing. He was the CEO of MF Global. It's a large investment firm, one of the largest investment firms in the world. For crying out loud, MF Global was a company that had $6 billion of exposure to Eurozone nations like Italy and Portugal. They were the sixth largest holder of U.S. T-bills. John Corzine's in, touch, in, in charge of all this. And just hours before it was made public that MF Global was going to go bankrupt, John Corzine, I'm stepping down as CEO, going to spend a little time with the family now. I'm stepping down, see you all later. And then we find out that MF Global has gone upside down. But the story just doesn't stop there, folks. Oh, I've got some damning audio. I was able to troll my files and find some old audio that you're just going to love in one moment. But can I tell you this? In addition to the bankruptcy filing and layoffs of more than a 1,000 employees at MF Global, MF Global told investigators that $600 million of customer money was missing. That's what they originally said, $600 million. $600 million. That's more money than we guaranteed to Solyndra just up the street from me. Here's here's what's here's the funny business, folks. The shortfall of money was withheld from investigators for five days. Five days. That would be an apparent violation of the law. Well, if I read the Commodity Futures Trading Commission reports and regulations properly, uh, that was a no-no. You're supposed to report this right away, not five days later. And then we find out that, no, it's not $600 million. It turns out it's $1.2 billion of money under management missing. Yeah, that John Corzine. This is the guy who was the go-to man for Obama and Biden. Now, let me play this audio for you. Because this is the audio that Joe Butthead and Beavis Obama don't want you to hear. They don't want you to hear this. Folks, this is how incompetent these people are. When they're looking to guys like John Corzine for advice, not just advice, but he is the go-to man. Okay, case in point. Here is Joe Butthead on the campaign trail for John Corzine when he was trying to get reelected in 2010. They're on the campaign trail, and Joe Butthead's telling the audience, uh, uh, John Corzine, he's my go-to guy. Yeah, that's the first guy we called when we were in transition. Take a listen to this. Way back in the transition period, before we were sworn in, when Barack Obama and I were literally sitting at a desk in a high-rise in Chicago, beginning to plan how we would try to get this economy out of a ditch, literally, the first guy I called was John Corzine. Not a joke. Not a joke. 
Because, first of all, he's the smartest guy that I know in terms of the economy on, and on finance. I really mean this. And he was pushing when I was campaigning about the need for us, once we took office, to hit the ground running, to save or create jobs. John Corzine, apparently the guy who came up with the phrase save or create jobs. John Corzine, the man Joe Biden just referred to as the smartest guy I know. John Corzine, the guy who now steps down from a firm hours before it's told that they're missing $600 million of client money. And then we find out later that it's $1.2 billion of client money. Yeah, that John Corzine. Best buds. Sage of the Obama administration. Oh, and that just wasn't a little slip of the tongue, you know, because Biden's known for that. He makes gaffes left, right, and center. This was something he was routinely saying every time he was with Corzine on the campaign trail as Corzine was trying to be reelected as governor. In fact, Mr. Producer, let's give the audience another example. It's great to be here uh, with one of the best partners that uh, Barack and I have in the country, a governor who... Uh, who uh, really does, I know it sounds corny, but really does share the same value. The thing that motivates, it all starts with this guy here, and goes to here, and then to here. Fortunately, he has, uh, uh, you know, all three are matched. They're all excellent. His gut, his heart, and his head. You know, uh, we, need, we need folks like John today, and what we need basically is what we've always needed. We need smart, honest, serious, tough politicians. Smart, honest, serious politicians like John Corzine. John Corzine, the failed CEO of MF Global. Listen, I don't know what's going to happen to this guy. He's been asked to come before Congress to explain himself. I don't know where this is going, but I can tell you something. There's a guy named Bernie Madoff who made off with a whole lot of client money, and he's behind bars right now. I don't know what's in store for Mr. Corzine. But I'm telling you something, Mr. Producer, I'm smelling something really rotten here. They share the same values? What does this tell you about Joe Biden? What does this tell you about Obama? Oh, and what does it tell you about Obama? Especially given the fact that now we know Obama's buddy, Tony Resco. Yeah, he's before the judge yesterday. The same Tony Resco that Obama called in. Hey, I'm about to make a purchase on a house. Never made a purchase like this in my life. Hey, Tony, could you come on over and give me a little advice? Huh? Just uh, I need some help here. Give me some advice. Should I buy the house? Maybe you can help me with the lot next door because I'd really like a piece of that. That Tony Resco, the guy who's been in jail for the last three years and the guy who was finally sentenced yesterday to ten and a half years. That friend of Obama's. What does this tell you about their values? Oh, I've got much more for you, ladies and gentlemen. Downtown San Francisco, Nancy's home district on the great KSFO. Okay, so... I'm going to get to your calls in just a moment, 877-381-3811. Talking about John Corzine, this is a huge story. I don't know what kind of trouble he's in, but I know there are thousands of people that are PO'd at this guy because there's $1.2 billion of money under management missing. John Corzine, former governor, New Jersey. John Corzine, former U.S. senator, Democrat, Democrat operative, Democrat financier. This is a guy that the Obama administration called on immediately upon coming into office for financial advice. I played those cuts from Joe Biden earlier. Now we go to Barack Obama because there is obviously no love lost when Obama was on the campaign trail for John Corzine when he was running for governor in 2010. Fending off this uh, this attempt by, and it was a successful attempt, obviously, by Governor Chris Christie to take over. Obama there, palling up with him, cozying up with him. Best buds, best buds, BFF. Play the cut, Mr. Producer. What we need are leaders that are committed to moving this country forward, moving this state forward. That's the kind of leader John Corzine is. That's why he deserves another four years. I mean, he's talking up a guy who's a crook. Just like Tony Resco, Obama's other crook buddy, who got sentenced to ten and a half years yesterday. And by the way, that was pathetic. You read the transcript, the account from that courtroom, where the district judge, the U.S. district judge, says, you defrauded the people of Illinois, you engaged in extensive corruption throughout the state of Illinois. This sentence must send a message that enough is enough. Guy was in a prison uniform, shackled, punk. He deserves it. He deserves it. Let me give you one more of Obama and Corzine. I mean, think about this. 
You can run. You can't hide, Obama. These are your people. These are your friends. These are the people you look to. You share their values, you say. Let's continue right here. Don't lose heart. Don't get impatient. Support the guy who's fighting for you. Your voice can change the world. Your voice can elect John Corzine, governor. Jeez. My gosh, $1.2 billion missing. And do you realize, I mean, this, this, is, this is the truth, folks. There was a, a, a piece in the nation back in November of 2008 that said Corzine was the change we can believe in, and it says, quote, the big news from inside the transition process, as Obama was transitioning to the White House, is the speculation that New Jersey Governor John Corzine might be selected for the essential economic position of Secretary of Treasury. These are the kind of fools, the crooks, the shams that this administration chooses to surround itself with for advice? You've got to be kidding me. All right, this uh, this deserves the calls on KSFO.